So former President Donald Trump plans to rally supporters in Pennsylvania this weekend. Yep, his trip to the key swing state comes as we learn the Trump campaign outraged the Biden-Harris campaign by a huge margin in the month of May. Lucas Tomlinson is live outside the White House with more. Lucas, good morning. Good morning. And of course, Steve, uh, President Biden has visited Pennsylvania more than any other state outside of his own home state of Delaware. And many analysts think that if President, former President Trump were able to win in Pennsylvania, he might possibly win the election. Of course, he's up in a number of swing states. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk about uh, the big campaign fine, uh, fundraising hall from the Trump campaign. The new May numbers are out, even though we're about to wrap up June. These new May numbers are out. As you can see here, the Trump campaign announcing 141 million dollars in donations. That's compared to 85 million from the Biden camp. Uh, now, recall the Trump guilty verdict came in at the end of May, likely one of the reasons. Now, let's go on to other donations. Uh, when the, uh, uh, Michael Bloomberg has given $20 million to uh, the Biden camp. Uh, that's not, and by the way, he's not the only uh, billionaire giving donations. We also have Timothy Mellon has given $50 million to the Trump Super PAC. That's the son of Paul Mellon, the great philanthropist and thoroughbred horse breeder and grandson of Andrew Mellon, the banker and art collector who, of course, the National Gallery, he's responsible for that and he's the former Treasury Secretary. But I digress. Now, the donation of Timothy Mellon is a notable, guys, because he's a reclusive billionaire who's been a major donor of Robert F. Kennedy Jr., and that's among one of the largest single donations ever, $50 million, you can see there, to MAGA Incorporated. Now, the Bitcoin proponents, Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, the Winklevoss twins, you remember them from uh, the social network, yesterday they endorsed President Trump and said they're sending a significant haul of Bitcoin to the Trump campaign. Uh, we also have uh, Melinda Gates announcing her first ever donation. She's going to be donating uh, to President Biden's. We have a uh, uh, the candidates fighting over uh, not just a Hollywood A-listers, President Biden going to that big Hollywood fundraiser uh, just last weekend, but also uh, these wealthy billionaires, guys. It's the battle of the billionaires. <laughs> there thank, we go. Thank you, Lucas. Thanks, Lucas. So it's amazing what the, uh, convicted in 34 counts will do for your it's bank amazing. account. Okay. <laughs> so instead of it destroying, now think about this, two years ago when the whole lawfare started, they thought, we'll destroy this guy. Remember, this quote's from Joe Biden saying, we're going to make this guy unelectable. Mm -hmm. uh, they never thought he'd get the nomination. If you hit him with lawsuits, they'd probably destroy him. He runs through, gets the nomination. You hit him with the lawsuits. Three are delayed. One's in action. And at the end, you get your conviction. And you might be able to call him convicted felon, but you also have to now say he's got more money than me in the right. bank. 116, uh, 116 million in the bank, and he out got 141 raised. Now, nothing's wrong with Joe Biden's fundraising. It's still great. Well, right. But now Trump has caught him. The most impressive aspect of it is when you look at Donald Trump, he's really out there doing the pitches to the American public for the money. Now that he's well, out of court. The now that he's out the court. But when you look at uh, Joe Biden, he's really using the star power of celebrities as well as the former president, Bill Clinton, as well right. as Obama, to rally the money Coastal in. Coastal elites that yeah. most Americans cannot relate to. It's interesting that the Democrats thought this was going to be the nail in the coffin That's for right. Donald Trump, that, that conviction. But that actually motivated people mm -hmm. to give money. He raised $56 million more in the month of May than Joe Biden. Well, and as much uh, money as Donald Trump is raising, there's an item that just dropped in Axios that talks a little bit about how apparently uh, fundraising will be, fundraising ability will be a key factor in his choice for running mate, which explains a lot of stuff because this week alone, we, a couple of days ago, we were talking about that billionaire summit mm -hmm. that Tim Scott put together, raising millions of dollars mm -hmm. uh, for his organization. Uh, and then last night in Ohio, uh, you had J.D. Vance, he had a fundraiser, five million bucks. Uh, you look at Doug Burgum, he goes out, he raises as much money as he possibly can as well. Uh, so apparently, according to uh, uh, Axios, this is going to be a big consideration on who Donald Trump picks. <laughs> and it sounds as well, uh, during the RNC when we are in Milwaukee, it sounds like they're going to have a big fundraiser the third night of the convention. And guess who's going to host that? the vice presidential pick. Mm -hmm. So the RNC is saying the pick will be announced before that third night. That's right. So bring your checkbook. Well, it's interesting right. because all of the contenders all have their certain tribe of donors right. that can to 
that can give money to Donald like Trump. Like Silicon Valley Trump. with so J.D. Vance. It, it may, exactly. So it may end up being a wash uh, with that being part of the decision because each of them have a different type of donor base uh, that they have in their chest. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see. So are all, yeah. these, all these billionaires calling Donald Trump and saying, well, I am, like Ken Griffin, I am, uh, I'm with Tim Scott, or mm -hmm. Doug Burgum, his billionaire friends right. are saying, you should choose him. Or Bill Ackman, who supported the other guy last time, didn't like Donald yeah. Trump now he's all in on he Trump. He was at that, wasn't he at that summit that Tim Scott hosted yeah, in Washington? Was, just a couple of days ago. So a few things going on. Uh, number one, July 11th. July 11th, we'll find out the sentencing. And if you start thinking in the perfect world, in the traditional campaign, when both candidates are not under house arrest or Trump. maybe in jail, mm -hmm. uh, there would be a lot of uh, a lot of responsibility for the number two. What if the number one has to stay at Mar-a-Lago? Mm -hmm. What if he has weekend house arrest? So a lot on July 11th. When it comes to Joe Biden, they have a something that's poll tested and focus group uh, driven, and they say they're going to keep saying Donald Trump, worse than ever, snapped on January 6th, uh, and will destroy the country, dictator. Right. So that's what he's going to be saying, worse goal. than ever, uh, and, uh, and, and re-highlighting how he's a failed president. When you look at both presidencies on almost every poll, Trump's has looked as more favorable than Biden. But these are why these guys are getting their millions of dollars. Number two, it looks as though uh, it looks as though, with, uh, as Axios is reporting, and the and the polls reveal it, that he is trailing in most of these battleground states, despite what the Senate candidates are doing. Think about this: in Ohio, Sherrod Brown is up five to Bernie uh, Moreno. Biden is down seven. In Pennsylvania, Casey's up six, roughly. I've seen him down lower. Mm -hmm. Biden is down two. In Wisconsin, Tammy Baldwin is up nine. Biden's up two. Some I see at a flat-footed tie. That's the problem. Yeah, and in, Mon and in Montana. Well, and that is the headline <laughs> in Politico, why Democrats think Joe Biden's problem is Joe Biden. And this piece uh, talks about how, and Brian, you uh, set it up perfectly, how the down-ballot uh, successes at the uh, Senate level are not translating into helping uh, Joe Biden. It's interesting. Tom Suozzi, who uh, just uh, flipped a district, I think it is the third congressional district out on Long Island, uh, because he ran a tougher on crime platform, he says that, and he's a Democrat, uh, he says that Joe Biden's got to get tougher uh, on, on various issues, but he's also got to essentially promote his green agenda for the young people, because it's the young people who are not going to vote for Tom it. Tom Swazi said that? Yeah, he, Tom Swazi wow. says it in the piece we're talking about. It's uh, interesting that these Democrats that are running the down ballots, that are running in these individual states, they might not want Joe Biden's endorsement. But if you're a Republican and right. you're running, you are begging Donald Trump to come to your state well, and, and endorse you. And right. so how many states, in how many uh, Democrat Senate races are they saying, hey, Joe Biden, can you come and campaign for me? Let's think about how many we can think of in the last <laughs> month or so. Zero. Okay, well, he can't yeah, campaign exactly. for himself. Well, he doesn't do anything. Neil Oxman, who's a Pennsylvania-based Democratic strategist, is quoted in this Politico um, article, and he says Democrats are enthusiastic about trying to win the Senate and trying to win the House. They're not enthusiastic about Biden's reelection. Period. It goes on to talk yeah. about how he's lost support among key building blocks like the black voters so, and young people. So this is what's going to hurt this, these other candidates uh, as it gets closer to the election. Uh, I know the polling would suggest that, okay, they're doing better than Joe Biden, but he's going to bring the entire ticket down because a lot of folks that go in to vote vote straight ticket. Mm -hmm. And so y you have the risk of them, say they're going for Donald Trump, uh, they're probably not going to go and start checking off the other boxes. I know in the state of Texas, most people vote straight ticket. They do it every single time. They just go straight Democrat or straight Republican. Right. And so I think that is the concern now. They're not so much, these candidates aren't, the piece was written to really not just talk about Joe Biden, but to say, if, if they don't fix the Joe Biden problem, he has the risk of right. bringing all Some the other candidates Some people might say, I don't like Joe Biden, so I'm just not going to go vote. Yeah. So right. then all that straight exactly. ticket. We always have Kamala affected. Harris to fall back that's on. That's exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, because and, that's working so right, great. Right. Tom Swazi's message also was strong on the border. And right. he's been down there a couple of times with his members-only jacket. Right. Uh, and George Santos was doing such a good job. Uh, I mean, that also is part of it, too. Tom Swazi came in there right. as a, a reasonable moderate, says, we got to get this thing straightened out, and he's replacing an absolute lunatic. Uh, and George Santos. We'll see if that flips again. Right. Well, the last couple uh, presidential elections, 
you know, the down ballot thing has been uh, impactful. Down ballot candidates outran ran Donald Trump in 2020 mm -hmm. and outran uh, Barack Obama in their re-election years. So this is something we have seen before. We just haven't seen the numbers like they are. Uh, the cover of the New York Post today, swing for the fences, and among other polls out there, right now Emerson's got a poll that shows that uh, Donald Trump is beating Joe Biden in six of the battleground states right now. And he's in a dead heat in Minnesota, so that'd be the third state now mm -hmm. in play. He wants to flip North Carolina, pouring a lot of money into it. Uh, but right now, Virginia, New Hampshire, and now Minnesota, as many suspected, border with Iowa, where he's winning big in a dead heat. So well, you, you better get save some money, Joe yeah, Biden. Well, You're going to have to spread it out to places you thought not were more commercial. You, you got the former president that's going to all these states, hosting all these rallies, arriving back into Mar-a-Lago at like midnight, or going to Bedminster, right. and. He, you don't have Joe Biden doing the same thing. He's If he wants to win, he's definitely not showing that he wants to by his travel. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.